In case you're here for the first time, my name is Billy Matsunaga and I'm a fully trained and certified kimono teacher and stylist. And as a kimono expert, for me this is now going to be so much fun to answer the most googled kimono questions. Let's get started. Yo! Some kimono questions. Let's start with do kimono. Do kimonos have pockets? Yes and no. They have pockets, but not in the very traditional meaning of pockets that are sewed in. You use the different parts of the kimono as pockets, for example, the big sleeves, especially for men because they're completely closed on both sides and you just have this tiny opening here on the front. Um, perfect pocket, by the way, and you can also use here the collar or you can also slip stuff into your obi. In tea ceremony, you even use the otaiko. The obi must be on the back as a pocket if you want to. So kimono do have kind of pockets to slip stuff in. They don't have sewed in pockets. Uh, by the way, I also have a whole video on pockets and kimono so that I'm going to link up here if you want to watch that. Does kimono have plural? <laughs> I like this question. You should not put the word kimono in plural, kimonos, because in the Japanese language there is no plural. So when you just say for example apple, ringo, it could mean one apple, it could also mean apples. So you kind of find out by context when you talk to people if it is plural or not. And when you want to use the putting Japanese names, Japanese wording into proper use, you should not put it into plural. And I'm a German native speaker and we have words like, for example, the English word fish that has the plural of fish. We have more words like that in German. So kimono can be plural or not in German too. So I don't find it super unnatural to me. I find it just super natural. I should probably put an uh into it. Does a kimono cost? I think the whole question is what does a kimono cost? Um, it depends on where you're going to buy your kimono. When you buy your kimono second hand or at flea markets, you can get them for less than 100 yen. That's like about a dollar or about one euro. But when you want to buy a kimono, for example, from a living treasure, yes, in Japan, they have something that's called ningen kokuho, which actually means human treasure. And those are artisans and craftsmen that have such a high level of skill that they are actually registered as a human treasure. When you want to get a kimono from some of those craftsmen, it's very often weaves or dyes or sometimes they used a stencil to dye the kimono and the person who makes a stencil is a registered human treasure. Those kimono are sometimes priceless, you cannot even pay for them or they're really ranging in the 10,000s something. So you can really spend a lot of money on kimono if you wanted to. What does a kimono look like? <laughs> I probably actually have to stand up, but a kimono looks like this. This is how a kimono looks like. Should not look differently and it's not a bathrobe, by the way. <laughs> Which way does a kimono wrap? Oh, I like that question a lot. So a kimono usually wraps left over right. So you have to put the right side first and you put the left side over it. And that was actually decided by a law in 719 because at that time it was actually way more common to wrap right over left in Japan. But in China, which is a leading nation during that time, they wrapped left over right and every nation or every country or every people who wrapped right over left were like the barbarians for the Chinese at that time. And because the Japanese emperor, emperor wanted to be seen as equals to the Chinese dynasty, they 
passed a law that says you have to wrap uh, left over right. And yes, nowadays um, dead people, dead bodies in Japan are dressed right over left. But seriously, when you go to a convention or an event and you see someone wrapping right over left, giving a snarky comment like, are you dead? Or I think you're a zombie. I seriously don't like these comments. As a professional kimono teacher, I really appreciate usually the effort in what people put into dressing themselves because putting on a kimono takes a lot of time, takes a lot of practice and actually people need a tiny bit of teaching because it's really hard to figure that all out by yourself. I usually appreciate the effort and come on, to be honest, I think not all of us, but many of us have dressed once right over left. Even I did it once. <laughs> In my case, it was the first class when I joined the kimono school where I took my teacher's license. I already had taken lessons at that time. And I came to the class and they were asking me questions. Was yeah, I already have some kimono dressing training. And then my teacher at that time was like, okay, the whole class is down here and you all watch that girl dressing herself. And I was in that moment under immense pressure and I didn't had built up, I didn't have built up such a muscle memory that I have today. So I dressed right over left. It happened. That's the one time it happened to me too. What does a kimono consist of? A kimono exists, consists of textile for sure. But when you're asking me what kind of fiber it's gonna be, it's basically any fiber you can put, you can lay your hand on actually. You have silk kimono, of course, you have wool kimono, you have cotton kimono, you have polyester kimono, um, in the past, I have seen a lot of different kimono made of many different fibers. Um, you also have, of course, mixed fibers. So basically whatever textile you can lay your hand on can be made into a kimono. What does a kimono mean? When you ask me what the word kimono means, it actually means clothes. Because ki is the... Um, character for dressing, wearing, and mono means thing. So it's a thing you wear, which is clothes. And actually still elderly in Japan refer to their kimono as, sorry, to refer to their clothes in their closet as kimono. The word kimono itself does not mean this garment, not at all. This garment is nowadays actually referred to as nagagi. And in the past it was called kosode. But we don't refer to it as kosode today anymore. Um, kosode is a different type of garment and this is nagagi. How much does a kimono weigh? Let's just weigh a regular kimono outfit and let's find out. Okay, so let's weigh this. This is the kimono outfit I wore yesterday. Let's only start with the kimono. I hope this is working out as it is. The kimono is one kilo and 18 gram. And when we put this together with the whole outfit, so you need an undergarment, nagojiban is what I wore yesterday on the bottom, and then the obi, and then you have obi age, plop, obi jime, obi makura, and three ties. This is like the least you need. It's two kilogram, 481 gram. So this is basically what I have on me right now. But also this kimono is one of my heavier ones. Let's try male kimono. This is one of my husband's kimonos. Um, the kimono alone is 922 grams. So it's, it's shorter, of course. Women's kimono, female kimono longer. That is why. So it's lighter than my kimono. But when you put all together, um, first of all, putting in the nagajuban and then we're gonna put in the haori because men's kimono or male kimono should be worn with a haori, obi, and then only two ties. And that's in total 2,354 gram. So you can see it's not making a big difference between 
female and male kimono. What do kimonos symbolize? Nothing, they're just a daily dress, it's fashion, you can put it on or not, whatever you like. <laughs> what do kimono colors mean? Oh. <laughs> My pet peeve question. This is part of the romanticizing of Asian culture in general. And I can say that because I have been through that too as a Westerner, as a white girl. I have been through that too. I thought, oh my gosh, everything has a meaning in Japanese culture. Actually living here for more than a decade, I can tell you they do, a they do have a tiny bit more meaning and stuff, but they don't pull it out everything and no one's really aware of it. Especially kimono colors. Ooh. ooh. For example, when you have the color red, and when you turn 60 years old, you're a, you should wear a red chan chanko, which is like a red vest you're gonna wear. And you put that red on because when you're 60, you the first you, you completed the uh, Chinese uh, how you call it? I'm missing the words. Not gonna come out. I'm gonna put it on screen. The, the Chinese star signs thing because you you finish it for a, a certain amount. Um, they say your second life starts and you become a baby again. And baby in Japanese is called Akachan, and Aka is red and it plays with the words there. And that's why you're supposed to wear red on your 60th birthday. But seriously, that is only the occasion for your 60th birthday. It does not mean that whenever you wear red, it means baby. So keep that in mind with any color. I had to study color theory for kimono. I had to study the Japanese colors for bigger exams. And I can tell you with colors, meaning never really pops up. You rather learn something like this color was worn by, for example, Shinsen Gumi, or you learn how this color is dyed, or when sometimes it's called like that, it's called like a bird or like completely something else. So it doesn't really tell you which type of color it is. And you actually have to remember, oh, this is actually a type of purple. This kind of stuff, you don't really learn a meaning. Believe me, that's not really happening. So kimono colors mean in the end, nothing. You can just put together whatever you want to wear. Just don't wear like full white and full black. These are the only two things where I say, be careful. But besides that, Go ahead and have fun with colors. What do kimono jackets go with? Oh, I actually like that question. I have a video on how to wear kimono jackets and other kimono garments um, in your daily wardrobe with Western clothes. Make sure to check that video out. What size kimono do I need? Again, I refer to one of my previous video. I made like the ultimate size guide of kimono where you learn how to measure and calculate your different sizes up to kimono coats. So kimono undergarments and kimono coats. Make sure to check that video out if you want to make sure. Also because kimono are measured differently than Western clothes. You, you measure them differently. And when you buy a kimono, they're going to give you different sizes and you will have to understand what is meant by that. So make sure to check that out. What type of kimono do geishas wear? Geisha wear, uh, usually they wear on daily life, they wear regular kimonos like I do when they have, when they go doing their job, they wear a so-called hikizuri kimono, which is a kimono that is dragged over the floor when walking. It's also way longer than a regular kimono. A uh, regular kimono usually for females has to be your height. So you from head to floor, your height, this is how long the kimono has to be. And geisha have up to plus 50 centimeter to that. They wear really long kimono and have this really nice kind of whale effect when dressing. Yeah, it's called hikizuri kimono. Okay, um, what else can we look for? Ah, what type of kimono? <laughs> We're here. What type of kimono does Nezuko wear? It's a regular kimono. <laughs> Nezuku wear is a regular kimono. It's uh, when you when we talk about type type of kimono, we have to talk about the formalities of kimono. 
which is such an annoying topic and everyone sells it off as rules. Just to make that clear, it's not rules, it's just common sense of dressing yourself. You have the same with Western clothes. Everyone knows that wearing a white t-shirt with a necktie on top is very Avril Lavigne, but wearing that in daily life is kind of, it's rather a statement. And some people will look at you like, what are you doing? And we have the same in kimono, of course, there's stuff you should not put together. There's just seriously stuff you should not put together. And Nezuko is wearing a regular casual kimono, you call it komon. Komon just means small pattern, it has a pattern all over, like the kimono I wear today. And it's just a regular komon kimono she wears, nothing special. It's uh, very character accurate in the um, class she's raised in or the place she's raised in the the color is kind of like the, the color of the kimono we can argue about that but besides that the kimono itself is very uh, appropriate what type of kimono does Tanjiro wear? Tanjiro doesn't he only wear a haori? does he wear a kimono? oh uh, here it comes again I have not watched Demon Slayer like what I've seen on my niece's uh, goods for uh, Demon Slayer, he's wearing like a Western outfit that looks like a uniform or something. And then he has a haori on top. What type of kimonos did Samurai wear? Oh, yes, this is again a question. It's really hard to, hard to answer because it really depends on what level of Samurai we're talking about. Because there were many Samurai out there and there were Samurai that were in a higher class and then we had lower class samurai and they had rules of what they're allowed to wear. Lower class samurai would very often just wear hakama, uh, kimono and a haori on top and put their sword into the obi. That's what you see with lower class samurai. Higher class samurai, they would even wear a sock tie. And now there's the question, what is a sock tie? Sock tie was the most formal garments for uh, novels and aristocrats in the Heian period, in the latter half of the Heian period. And when the samurai took over to rule over Japan, of course they wore those garments to show we are the ruling class right now. Because we have two big cultures in Japan. One of the cultures is actually the culture of the novels, the aristocrats, the family of the emperor, because these people actually wore completely different clothes that developed mostly in the Heian period because before that Japanese court gowns were actually uh, very heavily influenced by Chinese culture. They were really close to what the Chinese court gowns look like. And then uh, in the Heian period, Japan cut off strings of China and we call it Heian nationalism. And they kind of started to develop their own culture but when you really take a close look at those garments like sock tie, uh, noshi, kariginu, but also junihitoi, I think you can see really clearly that it has Chinese influence in it still, because the garments it is based on was Chinese, influenced by Chinese court gowns. And then on the other side, you have the samurai culture. That's a completely different culture because it has developed out of lower classes from classes who had not access to Chinese court gowns or any of these gowns that were worn uh, in the palace. And those garments look way more kimono-like. So in comparison, when you, for example, have a sock tie, it has a so-called ho on top, that's the last layer, and that has this round neck here on the front. And uh, hitatare, which is the highest form of gown from the samurai culture, you can see it has a rather kimono color here on the front. It closes like a kimono. And this is the big difference. So you have those samurai culture garments and you have uh, the aristocrat garments and it kind of mixed up throughout history. So the emperor or the emperor's family started to wear samurai culture garments as well. And of course, samurai from the very beginning also wore the rather aristocrat culture garments, but also their own garments. So it's really messy. <laughs> Um, to answer that question, what I actually think they're asking about is the so-called kamishimo. 
uh, Kamishimo is that garment that I'm gonna put on screen. That's a so-called Kamishimo. That is what you see in most period dramas from Edo period. Okay, um, let's find one cool... How kimonos are made. Um, I have a few videos about that. I have a rather modern way to make it and I have the rather traditional way to make it. I have both videos of it. You can check them out. How are kimonos worn? <laughs> I have several videos on that. Why kimono? Let's try that. I found a bad word. Why is kimono cultural appropriation? I don't want to talk about it, but I think a lot of you are interested in it. <laughs> I do think when you wear kimono, um, when you're interested in Japanese culture and you just want to wear kimono daily and have fun with it, it is not cultural appropriation. When you... Uh, I don't know, I, I think it gets hard when you try to sell something off as kimono that is not kimono and that's where it's getting a tiny bit uh you know um but besides that just to answer the question why is kimono cultural appropriation i would say kimono is not cultural appropriation also would need more context uh, of that question is there another word for questions <laughs> um how why what? Let's see if something else pops up with which kimono. Which kimono girl has which Pokemon? Are we talking about Arceus? <laughs> when you're asking about this kimono girl, what Pokemon she has. Um, right now, I think my number one in uh, the, the new Scarlet. Ah, my favorite is Nachtada. I don't know how it's called in English. I put it on screen. It's my favorite Pokemon. And Nidoran. Nidoran are my absolute favorites. But Nidoran don't exist in any of the new games and I'm really, really upset with that. I think that's about it. Uh, that was fun. I hope it answered uh, some of your kimono questions. Um, of course, just a light Google search. It's not gonna deep dive into any of the big kimono myths and uh, huge kimono mysteries that you might have, feel free to ask me in the comments or send me a message on Instagram or comment on my Instagram. Um, trying to get back to you, you know that. I, I read all your comments and I'm really trying to get better with replying to comments, seriously. In case you're new here and you want to learn more about kimono from a professional kimono teacher, feel free to subscribe. I would be really happy to have you here and I talk to you in my next kimono adventure. Bye!